Thank you for staying with us. And Sonia, before the break, we are just mentioning about your being guided and that little tyke and then the fact that it's a, a section in your book about your dad. Right. Can you just share that? Well, Diary of a Psychic is, a, is I wrote the story about growing up psychic mm -hmm. so that people would see how normal it is mm -hmm. and that that we all have those moments we just in most cases when you're not intuitive or following your vibes you just make different decisions. Well, I grew up in a in a in a in a city in Colorado, Denver, where we were the Catholics and then there was the public school and then we had our, you know, kind of our wars. And we were really not supposed to walk by the public school. Well, I have an older brother who was very provocative <laughs> and always was getting in trouble and, and asking for trouble really. And one day he went, sure enough, walking by the public school and some public school kids confronted him and he refused to move. And I got the vibes to go following him and I see him surrounded and I freak out because I see my brother about to get pummeled to death by a bunch of bullies and I threw myself on the ground and started praying. How old would you have been? I was um, eight. Yep. He was nine. I was just yep. praying not to see my brother annihilated and just then out of the blue, like coming from out of the sky, comes my dad, who was at home for lunch and decided rather than to just drive back to work, got the sudden impulse to drive the same street that my brother was surrounded by. So he gravitates and pulls his car over, opens the door, gets out, and he's like this very benign man actually, but he was a boxer in the army. So he kind of gets out and he goes, what's the problem? The bully's scattered. We get in the car and I'm like, oh, thank God. Thank God. And my brother is like, what? What's the big deal? And I couldn't believe it. And I said, why did you come? And my dad said, you know, even I get the vibe once in a while. <laughs> But that's just the, the, it's, you know, the point of the Diary of a Psychic is that it's really not a big deal. It's a bunch of little deals that if you listen and follow and connect and, and integrate with the spirit world and pray and ask for help and listen and go with the flow, your life becomes very charmed. Well, then that probably leads me on to your latest book, which is Soul Lessons and Soul Purpose. Yes. yes. Because if someone's sitting out there watching this now and they say, that's great, you know, you had a, a mom who was psychically developed, so Lucky how do me, I right. do it? Yeah, how do I do it? Now, would it be fair to say this is the book? This is the book yep. because I have nothing special. Mm -hmm. We are all, it's like if, if, if one flower gets the sun, it will, it will blossom and the others may stay dormant. But the minute they also get the sun, they'll blossom too. Mm -hmm. So this book you might consider like the sun yep. to, to help your spirit flourish. And there was a, a, a big best-selling movie out last year and a um, book called The Secret. Mm -hmm. And it was very good. Mm -hmm. Incomplete. Okay. But very good. Why was it, I, I sometimes ask this question. Why do you think? It was well, important? first of all, I think it was brilliant because mm -hmm. we learn in bits and pieces. You can't give everybody too much at once. Yeah. But what it did do is capture our imaginations and remind us universally that we are creators. Mm -hmm. Now, the next step, which is where we come to soul lessons, is it's not your ego that creates. Mm -hmm. It's only your spirit that creates. Your ego, well, that, I, don't, I take that back. Your ego can create one thing very well, mm -hmm. frustration. Okay. <laughs> but your spirit can create satisfaction, creativity. It can manifest health, joy, love, most of all, peace of mind. So this book are, is just some of the other pieces. And what I love about this book is it's a channel book. Mm -hmm. It was my um, guide's Joachim that came through that I talk about. And it, it's, it talks about the learning curve, not just the lesson, 
but that we learn in different stages, student, apprentice, journeyman, master. And it puts the lesson out very simply, then helps you assess where you are in the learning curve. If you're a student, it feels this way. If you're an apprentice, it'll feel this way. And if you're a journeyman, this way, and master this way. And then what to do relative to where you are on the learning curve. So you can read this book and say, you know, I know half of that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just the other half I have to work on. So it shows us we are all learning. No one is an absolute beginner across the board. No one. We are learning. This just helps us fine tune it and accelerate it so that we can learn a little more quickly and have a little more immediate satisfaction and move away from some of that frustration and fear that I think is the infection, the virus of five sensory consciousness of fear and control. It helps us kind of pop out of that and it makes you immune. Not only that, soul lessons will not only give you your voice and your power back, it endows you to be the next teacher and the next healer. And in that regard, we all help one another. So it's back to that tipping point again. That's right. Yeah. And I really believe that we're going to see that tipping point in the next five years. I was going to ask you that question earlier. I okay, do. So I think that, to me, the, it, 12, that's the tipping point. Okay, the Mayan calendar, 2004. Well, what that is, is the end of patriarchy. Uh -huh. Is that your spin on that? Absolutely. Yeah. It's the end of male-dominated consciousness. Yeah. And you're not saying male per se either, are you? Oh, no. Yeah, I'm as male clarify. as any male. I mean, in a way, we all are. We're Absolutely. a blend. Yeah. But I'm saying it's the end of the strictly intellectual, externalized God control. Mm -hmm. And it is the beginning of the integrated, feminine, nurturing face of God. So I'm very optimistic about it. Mm, good. I am. A lot of people are very scared and say, oh, it's the end. Of course it's the end. But do you know that's what the butterfly says in the cocoon before it busts out? Mm, that's true. And the other thing is, do you know that it almost kills a butterfly to get out of a cocoon? No. But it's the same effort that gives it the power to fly. Really? I didn't know mm -hmm. that. The struggle almost kills it, but it also gives it. So we're in a struggle. And I think it's an important struggle, but I feel like we're in a birth canal right now. Well, that's we're another question. This is great. You're just answering the question. Say, it's your psychic thing. Though. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> just remove me from the cameras. <laughs> Seriously, where are we at now? Well, you know, I with, feel with like the... we are in a transition point. Yeah. I actually feel that people collectively are beginning to sense that the, the paradigm and the way we're going about life is woefully inadequate. They're more receptive now than they've ever been. We are also going to become more actively conscious of the things that don't work, mm -hmm. like, for example, global warming, like, for example, um, me against you. Well, let's get back to global warming. Now, you get some of the scientists saying, yes, this is definitely happening, and some of them say, no. Nah. This is just a whole bunch of media propaganda. No, it's definitely happening, and you don't really have to listen to the scientists. Just look at nature and see what's happening. Just Scientists don't have to give you information. Look at our experience. The hurricanes are coming at, 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 at you know exponential force. There's tsunamis happening. There are um, ice caps melting. So I would say don't ask the scientists. Go outside and ask yourself, mm -hmm. what do you think? Mm. And That's do one's own little bit. Every single one of us. Gandhi liberated India with his own one little bit. Mm. Abraham Lincoln liberated the slaves in America with his little bit, and he was mentally ill. But he still listened to his spirit. In what way mentally ill? He was depressed. He had mental illness. It is a documented fact. Okay. Didn't know that. Well, that actually leads me on to another question. People who are diagnosed with, for example, schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. Now, is it really a mental illness or is it the fact it's that they are very... It's a soul fracture. Can you explain that? What I see, and actually I have a brother who's schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. So I've been very closely connected to schizophrenia. It's a soul fracture. It's that some part of the soul is not fully integrated into this reality. And it can happen for a lot of reasons. It can be genetic. It can be brought on by um, drug abuse. It can be the, the whole combination. But even if you have schizophrenia, if you begin to realign with your, with your spirit, 
you can begin to find a way to live healthily enough using of course the medications because your biology is not conducive to holding the spirit anymore. But my brother is schizophrenic and he has a very happy, grounded, healthy life. He needs help. He needs medication, but he's also very intuitive and very lucid. And, and he says that his problem was he was just a little bit too psychic. And I'd like to ask a bit more about that when we come back. Mm -hmm. Stay with us for the last part of our conversation with Sonia. <laughs> 